Iron Community, Jeff back again. While I got it all set up, I figured I'd knock out another video. This is going to be another in my other series of the Perfect 10. Again, inspired by Rick over at Rick and Records, pulling one uh, every 10th album, pulling 10 albums, one of every 10th album to create today's, this week's, this time's Perfect 10. Random draws, alphabetical order is how my setup is, and it just gives us a chance to take a look at albums that maybe haven't seen the light of day in a while, and to even pull them and revisit them and throw them on the turntable and, you know, just kind of give me a, something to spin for a day or so. So let's look at this again. I've done quite a few of these. I'm all the way over here to this section, and even I've got all of that and all of that and some other miscellaneous sections I could delve into later. But anyway, let's jump into this. Just 10 random records, every 10th record in my collection. Last time we ended with Idol Cure, so we're in the eyes. We start off with Screaming Symphony from Impelitary. Pretty sure this is where I discovered the band. Absolutely, probably still one of my favorite albums, just because it's where I cut my teeth. And then I picked up albums around this, or the ones that came out prior to this. Most of all were over, only overseas Japanese type of releases but which have been, uh, are in the process of being reissued. This is a reissue, actually a recent reissue for Impelitary. So a lot of their stuff is being reissued on vinyl and CD now, and I'm glad to see that. Absolutely smoking album. Impelitary, Chris Impelitary, one of the most shreddingest, fastest guitarists, yet still, you know, very has very good melodic writing. Rob Rock on vocals, top notch, top notch. If you haven't heard this album and you're into melodic metal, you've got to check this out. This one, Entry to the Master, and pretty much anything with Rob Rock, but all in Pelteria is really great stuff. So there's that. Oh, wow. Now I just pulled these, didn't really look at them as I was pulling. Free and Wild, Iron Dogs. This is one that I got in the Metalhead box. I've listened to it a couple of times, hadn't got into it too much, kind of a hard, you know, kind of got a little punk vibe to it, but to me it's just, it's like a two-man band, I believe if I'm recalling, yeah, and you know, it's kind of rough, vocals are kind of iffy, and it's just kind of, it's garage rock, but I mean, you know, it's it's metallic, a little bit of a punkish feel, anyway, that, uh, that one I could probably move along. I'm probably not going to get a lot of listening. I said this is funny because I just did this video. Uh, another video. Anyway, this pops up again. X Factor. I showed this in my 10 albums from 1995, which I just made. Filed all the records back. Pulled 10 more. And here it is again. So, yeah. Again, this is the first one. Blaze Bailey. It was, it was interesting and exciting when it first came out. To me, it got a little boring quickly just because of the redundancy of the repetitiveness of the vocals it's just like every chorus was like a thousand times sung you know and it just it just got really i mean there's some good, cool moments on here but overall it left me kind of there yeah. and of course 10 records later in my collection is the first iron maiden i discovered iron maiden really around the second time killers and then went back and got this but the two paul diano year albums are just classic there's not a bad moment on them i think they're just two of the two great albums now of course you know with bruce dickinson they went on to be even greater but these earlier ones they have that punk feel they're metallic with the punk edge to it because of paul deanna and there's just there's just no denying that this is this is just you know top-notch stuff um and you know it, it's it feels like two different bands with a different singer they went on to do some absolute greatness but i think in a way these are the great albums too that they, they are the the founding great albums Okay, cool. Jerusalem Volume 2. I don't think I have Volume 1 on the album. I really need it. Jerusalem, uh, Swedish, hard, at this point, hard rock band, 70s rock, um, Christian band, and absolutely love everything they've done. But they went through their changes, uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2, very much a 70s rock feel, classic rock feel. Next album, a little bit edgier, you know, next album better it's just like they kept progressing as music progressed and so yeah absolutely love the band and all their stages and i love the basic simplicities of the things that we find on volume one and volume two and i need volume one on vinyl haven't picked that up yet ah juice priest live great album great tour great time frame you know this would have been uh yeah back in their heyday you know this is going to be all the greatest songs um just one of the this is really right in the middle of when i was really getting into Judas Priest. 
we got into them probably in 83 or 84. You know, this is what, 87, I believe. So, yeah, this is just, this is their heyday. This is when they were absolutely at their prime, in my opinion. Oh, cool. Streets of Rock and Roll by Keel, autographed. Yeah, this was a reissue on vinyl a couple years ago. And uh, anyway, picked that up from Keel's site. He autographed it there. Love Ron Keel. Love all the work he's done. Uh, I even appreciate some of the country stuff he's done. But uh, he's just been a staple in my rock and roll metal collection of the 80s. Loved it nearly day. Saw him in 1984 live. Excellent show. I've mentioned it numerous times. It was Keel and it was Accept and it was Helix and it was Lillian X who were a little known, no known band at the time. They were a local band in Louisiana where I saw them. No albums or anything out at that time. So it was really Keel, Helix, Accept, amazing, perfect, excellent show. There you go. This is a later album, uh, uh, later in the career, but yeah, glad to have that on vinyl. Aha! Killed by Kane. One and done. One and done. The uh, band used to be called White Ray. There, I, I, I was in communication with the band at the time. Have all those demos. Love those albums. Those uh, White Ray demo demos. I say demos. They're custom release tapes. They're professionally all the way. Studio recordings that uh, the band put out independently as, you know, four song cassettes here and there. They were later compiled into an anthology released on uh, Rocks Records, if I recall. And so those were released. But then the band changed their name. Killed by Kane got signed, put the album out, produced by Dale Thompson, A Bride. I'm not real favorable at the time of the way and the direction that they ended up sounding. It was a stray from the White Ray sound, which I had grown to love. Uh, the singing was a little more aggressive sounding but i mean it is still a great album and when i revisited it you know when you revisit it from time to time it's like i don't know what i was so down on this album back in the 90s for but it's it's really great now um the members some of the members of this have been resurfacing recently if you're not familiar uh, i've had them on the channel before but moonshine zombies is where some of the guys have resurfaced and they're just straight up uh, what's a good description? Uh, you know, John, the singer, I've had him on uh, with the interview in the past. Um, to me, he sounds a little like Danzig, very much like Clutch. At the time, I didn't really listen to Clutch, so I couldn't have that comparison. But now that I have some Clutch albums, I'm like, dang, it sounds like John. But yeah, uh, John, sound, so the vocals have a Danzig, Clutch, slight Elvis appeal. But they're, you know, definitely uh, just full of oozing of backwoods just ugh, sludgy heavy uh, I, I don't even want to use the term country at all but they've got that backwoods southern flair that's still really edgy so yeah check them out they have a brand new video that just launched about a week and a half ago i posted it in my on my channel in my uh tab where there's you know comments i showed a link to their video so check that out. Oh, okay, cool. King's X, King's X. This is their one, two, three, fourth album. Just self-titled King's X. Probably absolutely one of my favorites. I mean, the first three or four albums are just great. After this, with Dogman and that, they started changing a little bit in style. So it's hit or miss. I mean, I still love them all, but there are some albums in there that I'm kind of still mm, scratching my head with. This one, I don't. This one, top to bottom, top to bottom. I thought the one prior to this was a little, there's some, some oddities in there. And then this one came back with no oddities, top to bottom. Just to me, almost one of their most perfect albums. So there you go. Love that King's X, King's X. And okay, I see we're into the K's now. We got Kiss Alive, the Millennium Concert. So yeah, what would this be? Kiss Alive 4, technically. So there you go. Um, Ace Fairley and Peter Chris are back. So this would have been the Millennium time frame when the reunion was going on. Great stuff there. And that's it. That is number one. Though we're not really ranking them, are we? That's number no one. No numbers. It's just the tenth one in the collection as we go forward. And that's it for this one. I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Rock on and rock hard.